Hey, this is DS Yaxheimer, and this is another edition of the Spectre. It's great to be back. Um, this is, I'm doing a little bit of a review, a little bit of an assessment of the recent Natalie Portman movie, Lucy in the Sky. Um, when I first saw a trailer for it um, early last fall, I was like, hmm, looks pretty cool, looks pretty interesting, until I found out what it was about and what it was kind of based on. Um, the film is based on actually the account of... Lisa, astronaut Lisa Nowak, who in 2007 uh, assaulted or uh, stalked and uh, uh, approached a woman who uh, was cheating on or was actually having a relationship with her ex, who um, Lisa Nowak was cheating on with her husband, this, this astronaut named William O. Felian, I can't really pronounce his name right, but whatever. Um, strange name. But anyway, these are astronauts, by the way, keep in mind. So Lisa Nowak, as if you're anyone that's familiar with this story, which a lot of people are, she drove across country, like, or drove from Houston to Orlando, about 900 miles, supposedly wearing a diaper, um, and purchased a bunch of stuff, like ropes and things from the... Um, and I think Mace from the hardware store and approached this woman and uh, and sprayed her and whatever and she got in some trouble for that obviously um, so anywho anyway um, so why why she was in in her the the, uh, the woman she attacked her name was Colleen Shipman which actually sounds like kind of an astronaut name. Um, and uh, they, they've certainly taken quite a bit of liberties with this with this movie. And the movie is boring as shit. It is. It's very boring. I don't know why they get why they make a movie. They get like a few good actors like John Hamm and Natalie Portman, and they put them in a, in a fucking piece of garbage like this because there's no other way to describe it. It's a bigger disaster. Than the Challenger, um, that's a bad joke. But uh, I had to go there. Hey, I didn't use the Columbia because hey, that's too soon. Um, so yeah, they took quite a bit of liberties. I wasn't sure the movie wasn't really just. It wasn't necessarily well in the film in the beginning, as the movie opens, it says based on real events. And I've seen that in so many movies, and that can mean a lot of things. You know, it can be as loose as you want. So, um, basically, it was it was based on, you know, they weren't the same names as the characters in the film, you know, um, as the people in real life. So, of course, that's um, true. And the exact course of events were different. Um... You know, um, when I started watching the movie, I didn't think it was a shit movie, but certainly halfway through, I knew all hope was lost. So, um, you know, this mission needed to be scrubbed from the get-go. So, it really, to me, this movie was like, you know, some shitty Lifetime movie starring Lori Laughlin. I think, it, you know, for her community service, I think that would be an appropriate punishment, is that she would have had to have made a Lifetime movie. I think, that's to me, I mean, that was the level of storytelling and writing and everything that went into this in the first place. So, um, but um, basically to break it down, this movie had a budget of $27 million, which isn't a huge budget for a movie, especially a movie that has some special effects, but most of this movie isn't focused on um, her shuttle missions, so you don't see a lot of her in space in the shuttle and some of those effects, which were done well. Um, the only good thing I can say about this movie, the look of the movie was decent, um, but um, the story and the plot nut was just absolutely abysmal. 
Um, and get this, the film's box office only did $325,000. 325,950 bucks. That's not even, that is the budget of the first Halloween movie, which was one of the highest grossing, most profitable horror movies ever made because it made millions and millions of dollars, continues to make money. So, um, it made, I just to give some perspective, um, it's like they were trying to lose money. They, there's no way they were making this movie and they thought, man, we have hit fucking pay dirt. Man, you know what I mean? This is going to do so good. I mean, the characters are just unsympathetic. And especially John Hamm, who's playing like another Don Draper like character. And I like John Hamm. I think he's a good actor. They just, you know, he just, it's like, yeah, I get it. You're an actor. You get a, you get a role for a movie. Maybe it looks good script wise or something looks, you know, there's some potential. But um, the movie basically is kind of based on this sort of tabloid trash story, which is what it was. It was some woman chasing after who was felt scorned, and she went after the rival of her affections for the, the guy she was she was with and, um, and everything. And she just, t for, for someone who is supposed to be as, as you know, bright as Lisa Nowak was, and, um, and I would assume, um, you know, Lucy Cola, that's the name of Natalie Portman's character. Um, why would they do something so fucking stupid, you know? I mean, I'm a regular fucking idiot, and I haven't done anything that fucking stupid. At least I don't think so. Not for love, anyway, but I don't know. And some critics of the film, there was an astro female astronaut who was critical of the movie, saying that um, this film implies that people who go to space come back and they, they go a little nutty. Like, this has really only happened once that's notably, I mean, this with this incident. So I think it's just this person's individual issues and everything. I, I wouldn't blame her shuttle mission on, or, and what she experienced up in there, up in space, um, for doing what she did when she got home. I, I don't, there, there's, they haven't, uh, there's been no real correlation established there. And, uh, I mean, I don't know what that would do. You have to be a special kind of mentality to be an astronaut in the first place, of course. But most of these astronauts um, come back and they're pretty well-adjusted people. Most of these astronauts, we don't even know the fuck their names are. I would have known who this woman was unless she went out and did this shit. You know, I mean, I know her more for wearing an adult diaper and driving, you know, 900 miles. and <laughs> Which I don't get. How could you drive in a car, you know, in your own feces and urine? For, you know, that's just the, it's, oh, God, this goes beyond, that's a special kind of crazy. So, um, anyway, the motivation in the film, anyway, um, is that John Hamm's character, he, um, John Hamm's character, I'm trying to find out which one he was, I was taking notes on the cast, is Mark Goodwin, he, um, he uh, basically wrote an email to, uh, I guess, the one of the people who were higher up in NASA and said she wasn't fit for this mission that she'd been training for to go back up again. And that's part of the reason, because in the movie, she goes after John Hamm in the end and goes to his car and sprays him with mace or something like that, or bug spray or whatever the fuck it is, wearing a, you know, a fucking wig, which she did, Colleen, or Lisa Nowak, wore a wig when she went after uh, the the woman that's calling Shipman in real life. So, uh, and, but anyway, um, to get a little, tell the story a little bit better, I'm going to seg into this, and uh, we'll come back and we'll uh, uh, talk a little bit more about this very, uh, very strange incident in our space program. Natalie Portman, who plays Lucy Cola, an astronaut who has a transcendent experience in space, which this film fails to explore, really. She gets involved with fellow astronaut Mark Goodwin, who later gets Lucy booted from a mission and is basically fucking the entire stable of female astronauts at NASA. In real life, Lisa Nowak, Lisa Nowak simply 
seemed driven by jealousy and paid the price for it by having a mugshot this hideous circulated all over the news. So, um, what can we learn from this story? Uh, I mean, most average people like you and me will never go to fucking space. You know, that whole Mars thing is a goddamn pipe dream. Uh, but, um, that, I mean, whoever this Lisa Nowak or, you know, uh, Natalie Portman's, uh, uh, real-life counterpart was, you know, this man, uh, <clears throat> that astronaut that she was having an affair with must be pretty good in bed for her to go through all this shit. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't really know. I just don't, I mean, the real Lisa Nowak, I mean, I've seen pictures of her, she's a very, she's an attractive lady, I mean, she's very accomplished and shit like that, she was married, she had kids, um, and there's, there's all kinds of issues there, I mean, it's just like any place, you know, it can happen at a school, it can happen at a hospital, any typical sort of workplace, you know, um, and, you know, uh, people who are intelligent and that hold uh, these these very lofty positions, these very coveted positions, because very few people do get to go into space and everything like that, are just human beings like you and me, and I, I guess that's the point of the movie. I don't know. Um, I, I found it interesting that she was, at the end, and this, this I'm doing spoilers, so fuck it. And anyway, I'm not spoiling anything because this movie sucks, but <laughs> she was... Natalie Portman, it flash forwarded three years later after this incident, and in real life, um, Lisa Nowak had, um, she was, I guess somewhat, she, she, they put her, um, they knocked her down in rank, and they let her have her pension, I think, and they kind of, uh, had her, uh, court record sealed. And she lives in Texas now. That's all I know. I don't think I don't know if she did time time for it. Um, she probably has you know some kind of probation or whatever. She's I'm not sure. I mean, um, people who are in kind of you know, like military like positions, like she was, especially somebody's in a position of you know she's. I mean, what, if you're an astronaut, you're kind of privy to sort of maybe even classified information. I mean, we all don't know what they see up there or how things work on the International Space Station or how the space shuttle works, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, these are people that are trusted with very sensitive information, so I'm assuming she got some breaks. Um, and, you know, she has some privileges because of it. So, but in the movie... Natalie Portman is beekeeping at the end. And it was funny because I worked for a beekeeping supply company and I was last month commenting to my coworker that, yeah, these look like astronaut suits. I mean, of course, you know, beekeeping suits do resemble astronaut suits. But anyway, um, but that it was just funny. That's what she's doing. She's beekeeping. Um, and that was the end of the movie. And they didn't explain a lot. They didn't explain what happened in the three years between the time of the incident and when she did, um, and when she was, it showed her at the end. Um, it was just kind of a nonverbal scene, and we were, I was just supposed to be left up to interpretation. So, I guess that's basically the movie Lucy in the Sky. Um, some, a film that I thought was going to be a lot better um, five months ago when I first saw the trailer, and it was a thorough disappointment. So, if you want to watch it, just wait till it's like free on Amazon or something like that. I'm sure it will be. Um, Amazon will probably pay you to watch it. Um, so anyway, this has been another edition of the Spectre. Um, it's I'm, I'm trying to do more of these videos. I haven't been getting them out uh, out as much as <clears throat> at the same frequency I have had been before. I've been busy at work and everything like that. And um, but I love making these videos and. Um, getting your feedback and everything like that, and um, hopefully um, enlightening and entertaining you. Who knows? Maybe I am. But in any case, um, take care, um, like and subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you can be alerted of new videos when they drop. So, um, and if you're an aspiring astronaut, um, just, you know, follow your dreams. That's not likely to happen to you, you know. 
just keep your personal life, you know, away from your outer space life. I don't know how to put it, but I mean, if you're going to, you know, the future generation, if you're going to wind up on Mars and stuff, man, you're just going to meet up there. Of course, you're going to get busy because you're stuck up there with whoever you're up there with. So, uh, um, that'd be interesting. I would have rather seen a movie about that. That would have been a more interesting movie. You know, like, your wife goes to Mars on a mission in your home and shit, and like, you know, and she's banging John Hamm, and I can guarantee you if they make that movie, John motherfucking Hamm's gonna be on it, he's gonna be screwing every lady in that Mars colony. Guarantee it. Alright, I'm getting out of here. Um, if you um, have any <laughs> ideas on any future videos you want me to make, um, please leave in the comments below. Um, it's, it's, um, good to be back doing this, and good to, uh, well, at least you get to see me, I don't get to see you. So, anyway.